Greetings, University of Arizona Global Campus Class of 2023, staff, family, and friends. My name is Dante Foster from Denver, Colorado, and it is my honor and privilege to sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave congratulations class of 2023 Good afternoon, Wildcats. Welcome to the fall 2023 virtual commencement for the University of Arizona Global Campus. My name is Paul Pastorek and I'm Senior Vice President at the University of Arizona Global Campus. And I'm excited to be your MC for this special occasion. Today, we're gathered here not only to celebrate your incredible achievements, but also to recognize the unwavering support of your families, friends, and our dedicated faculty members. It's a day to rejoice in your hard work, your persistence, and the milestones that you've achieved on this educational journey. Since we're in the virtual world, let's bring the energy right here to our screens. Let's have some fun and interact. I want to see those emojis, hear those virtual cheers, and feel the excitement through those pixels. So let's start with a round of applause, wherever you are, for each other, for yourselves, and for the outstanding faculty members who have not only taught you, but also stood by your side, cheering you on every step of the way. This is a special moment for many families out there as they celebrate the graduation of their loved ones. So graduates, take a moment to turn to your friends and family and offer them your heartfelt congratulations. They have been your pillars of support. And today is a testament to their love and encouragement for you. Share your graduation celebrations on all of our social media platforms using the hashtag UAGCGrad23. That's UAGCGRAD23. Let the world see your accomplishments and the happiness you're feeling today. As we continue to celebrate this remarkable day of achievements and successes, we want to ensure that every single graduate and their loved ones feel the warmth and inclusivity that the University of Arizona Global Campus stands for. And so in recognition of our diverse community, I will now introduce a moment for our Spanish speaking graduates and families. Saludos, clase de 2023. Vamos, Wildcats. Mi nombre es Mauri García y es un tremendo honor estar aquí para celebrar tu logro. Lo hiciste y fue posible. Sé que no fue fácil, pero valió la pena. 
Muchos de ustedes enfrentaron muchos desafíos únicos mientras completaban sus estudios y deberían estar muy orgullosos de lo lejos que han llegado con su tenacidad y dedicación. En 2022, recibí mi licenciatura en Justicia Social y Penal del Campus Global de la Universidad de Arizona. Enfrenté adversidades y tenía muchas dudas, pero terminé y fue un logro para mí y mi familia. La educación es un tremendo privilegio que nunca daré por sentado. Muchos de ustedes, como yo, son estudiantes de primera generación y son los primeros en su familia en graduarse de la universidad, pero no serán los últimos. Tener una educación es la herramienta más poderosa que puedes utilizar para cambiar el mundo. Una cosa acerca de nuestra cultura es que no nos damos por vencidos y conquistamos grandes montañas. La elevación de la humanidad es elevando a los demás. Así que mientras subes la montaña, no olvides echar una mano a los que están siguiente. Todos ustedes son campeones y esta es una victoria que merece celebración. Es el comienzo de un nuevo capítulo en vuestras vidas. Tú perteneces aquí. Tienes lo necesario para transformar tu comunidad. Tus ancestros sonríen con orgullo. Nunca cuestiones el impacto que tienes en el mundo. Este logro es resultado de años de dedicación, esfuerzo y sacrificio. Detrás de cada uno de ustedes hay amigos, familiares, maestras y maestros que los han apoyado en este camino. A todos ellos queremos decirles muchas gracias. Hoy al recibir sus diplomas están equipados con conocimientos y habilidades que les permitirán afrontar los desafíos del futuro. Sigue explorando nuevas formas de cambiar el mundo y no dejes de aprender cosas nuevas. Juntos somos fuertes. Cada uno de ustedes tiene el poder para marcar la diferencia en el mundo. No tengas miedo de perseguir tus sueños y hacer lo que amas. Sean valientes y apasionados en su búsqueda de un mundo mejor. En este tiempo de celebración, reflexionemos sobre lo lejos que han llegado y miremos adelante con esperanza. Les deseo a todos un hermoso futuro. Vuela alto sin olvidar tus raíces. Felicidades, clase 2023. El mundo es tuyo para conquistar. Adelante y haz historia. Now, let's take a moment to acknowledge and pay our respects to the land and territories upon which the University of Arizona stands. It is a land rich in history, culture, and heritage and we humbly recognize that it has been home to indigenous peoples for generations. We respectfully acknowledge the University of Arizona is on the land and territories of indigenous peoples. Today, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes with Phoenix metropolitan area being home to the Ak Chin Indian community, Fort McDowell, Yavapai Nation, Gila River Indian Community, Salt River, Pima Maricopa Indian Community, and Thana Otham Nation. Committed to diversity and inclusion, the university strives to build sustainable relationships with sovereign native nations and indigenous communities through education offerings, partnerships, and community service. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce a distinguished member of the Board of Regents, someone who has been an instrumental force in guiding the path of our institution towards excellence. Graduates, I'm very proud to welcome you and celebrate you, the first University of Arizona Global Campus graduates. Through perseverance, persistence, and resilience, you've reached this moment and you're now positioned to make your mark on the world. I know you've worked really hard for this moment and we commend you for reaching this important milestone. While we tend to measure success in terms of increased employability and earning, the true measure of the value of a college degree is in the world of opportunities that are now available to all of you. As you begin your new adventure, I hope you'll keep lifelong learning a priority. It'll broaden your horizons. It'll ensure your skills remain in demand in our rapidly evolving world. 
Be proud of your degree and the determination and hard work that brought you here to this day. You've mastered subjects and a major, and you've learned how to learn, which is no small thing as most of your learning is still ahead. Now, go use your newfound knowledge to help others and help make Arizona and the world a better place. And welcome to the family of Wildcat alumni. Please join me in extending a virtual round of applause to President Robbins, whose leadership have shaped the University of Arizona into the remarkable institution it is today. Thank you, President Robbins, for being with us today and for your support of our graduates. Graduates, welcome to your commencement. My name is Bobby Robbins, President of the University of Arizona. Congratulations on reaching this incredible milestone. I'm honored to help you and your families celebrate. Your time at the University of Arizona Global Campus is marked by the knowledge and wisdom you have gained to pursue your goals. And we're all excited to see the impact you will make on our world. Your hard work has brought you here today. You have challenged yourselves throughout your academic career. And we celebrate your dedication and accomplishments. As each of you prepare to move on to new jobs, further studies, or to other new adventures, I encourage you to take time to reflect on your University of Arizona global campus journey. Remember your achievements, the connections you've made, and the relationships you have built. You're a Wildcat for life, and I hope you stay involved as alumni through the many chapters of the Arizona Alumni Association. Once again, Congratulations to you, class of 2023. Thank you for being part of the Wildcat family. Thank you, President Robbins, for joining us today and for your continued support of our graduates, current students, faculty, and staff. Allow me now to introduce our keynote speaker, Omar Vasquez. Omar is in-house counsel at Vulcan the family office of the late Microsoft co-founder, Paul Allen. With a career spanning law, finance, and a deep commitment to education, he brings a wealth of experience and inspiration to our virtual stage today. Omar, we are honored to have you with us, and we look forward to the insights and inspiration you will share with our graduates. Please join me in welcoming Omar Vasquez. Greetings to you, students of the University of Arizona Global Campus, class of 2023. Today marks the culmination of a commitment. Some time ago, you committed to pursue a degree from the University of Arizona Global Campus. That commitment took time. It took sacrifice. On top of working a full-time job, raising kids, taking care of parents, or managing a home, you decided to take on the challenge of readings, coursework, assignments, writing papers, and studying for exams. And you did it all during a once in a century global pandemic. And now as of today, you have earned a credential that you will carry for the rest of your life. Now the question becomes, what's next? You're graduating at a unique moment in time. We only recently witnessed the end of COVID lockdowns, and the return of our troops from Afghanistan after the longest war in US history. Meanwhile, American democracy faces a serious set of challenges. Europe is being invaded by a so-called superpower and the increasing intensity of climate change is all but inescapable. So what is it now that we should do? In preparing my remarks for this moment, I spent much time reflecting on the lessons I've learned in the 18 years since I graduated from undergrad. Some of these lessons I've always held some are more recent, and some I'm only just beginning to discover. I don't know if the words I will say are truths or if the lessons are valuable, but they are ideas I wrestle with. They are ideas I continue to find helpful, and I humbly present these ideas for your kind consideration in the form of three challenges. The first challenge is to identify your passion. What is your passion? To understand mine, you need to understand how I got from El Paso to the East Coast. I went to OK public schools, did well academically. I knew that to apply to colleges, you had to take the SAT and apply for financial aid. 
But if you had asked me where I wanted to go to college, I couldn't have told you where or why. In, in fact, I really only knew of three colleges, UT Austin, Notre Dame, and Harvard. Then during my junior year of high school, I received in the mail an invitation to apply for a particular four-week summer program, which introduced students like me to undergraduate business school. In addition to learning about finance, accounting, and management, the program introduced me for the first time to the, the idea of applying to colleges with undergraduate business schools or economics programs. Schools like Penn, NYU, Michigan, and Chicago. And it was this summer program that changed the trajectory of my life. Largely because of that program, it was important to me to create educational opportunities for others, just as others had created meaningful educational opportunities for me. After college, I would go on to join Teach for America, where I would teach high school math for six years. And as a teacher, I would similarly share with students and families pathways for college success. And even after leaving teaching for law school, I would continue and still to this day continue to create and support educational opportunities for students. I believe our passions are how we make our marks on the world, no matter how small. Our passions motivate us to work hard, to work for something greater than ourselves. Our words and the service of our passions reverberate long after we have spoken them. Our actions plant tiny seeds that create lasting, powerful legacies. So my challenge to you is to determine your passion. How will it drive your words and actions? Will you follow your passion to where it leads? And that leads me to my second challenge. In response to the question of what do we do now that we have our degree, my answer is I challenge you to take risks. Now, of course, risks are risky. They come with consequences, some of which can be very embarrassing. I will share one such story with you now, a story for which time has kindly eroded the embarrassment that I once felt. During my early years as a teacher, I was convinced I knew everything. And believe me, I have long since been disabused of that mindset. But back then I was convinced that school culture would be greatly enhanced and along with it academic achievement if we just had a robust freshman orientation program, not unlike the one that I had when I was a high school freshman. So I set about trying to develop the programming, get information out to parents and browbeat the other teachers and administrators for not doing this earlier. To no one's surprise, the program was a complete and humiliating flop. I was stretched far too thin to do all that work. And worse yet, I had failed to get sufficient support from any teachers or administrators. Of course, I learned something from this experience. I learned the critical importance of building a coalition as a condition for making change, of not trying to take on massive projects all on my own without the buy-in of key stakeholders. Albert Einstein said, a person who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Looking back on this experience, I'm happy I learned this lesson in my early mid-20s while a teacher and not in my 30s as a corporate lawyer. As an aside, I will note that although I didn't get that job done of setting up the freshman orientation program that year, the following year, with the support of many more teachers and admin, our school pulled it off, making it a regular feature of onboarding freshmen. My old grandpa back in El Paso too often recites for me a saying in Spanish, detrás del miedo está el dinero. Behind the fear lies the money. Now, you can replace money with whatever concept you want, but you get the idea. To take a chance on success, you have to get past the fear. Any fan of Frank Herbert will recognize this prayer from the book and movie Dune. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. Now that you have your degree, what kinds of risks might you take? Will you start a business or lead a civic initiative? Will you move abroad or change jobs or cut out some toxic emotional vampire from your orbit? What risks will you take? What stops you from doing it? And that leads me to my final challenge to you. In response to fear, I challenge you to find the courage to be honest. My boss recently shared a piece of wisdom with me that I can't stop thinking about. If we don't say yes authentically, we say yes resentfully. I'm gonna repeat that. If we don't say yes authentically, we say yes resentfully. And that leads to far more problems than if we had just said no in the first place. I admire the people I have met in my life that can truly be radically honest with themselves and with others. 
In my mind, these people are truly free. I had one moment of courageous honesty with myself that I'll share. This story takes place about nine years ago in the summer. I had just graduated from law school and I was studying for the bar exam in a lovely little log cabin on a small lake in Western Washington, just outside Seattle. There wasn't much to do except study, jump in the lake and watch the occasional World Cup game. But during this time, I found for the first time in some time, some serious solitude. I had a chance to reflect on my school and work experiences over the past three years. And during this time, I considered the many successes for which I was proud. Trial team, moot court, law review, writing motions for a big law firm. But if I was honest with myself, I had been kind of miserable the whole time. Legal research was painful to me and writing briefs kept me up all night, stressing. I was dreading the idea of a career for life, having to basically write papers all day. And then when the papers were done, I'd have to gear up for a big fight. I had thought this was what I wanted for so long, but then to finally have it, I realized I wanted something different. Long story short, I switched careers to a corporate transactional practice before my litigation career ever got going. And I can tell you now, I have a dream legal job with interesting work, reasonable hours, and a predictable schedule. How did I get there? I believe the answer is stillness. I think the first step towards being courageously honest with yourself is to create stillness in the mind. It's only once we entangle thoughts that we create space to hear the cosmic wisdom of our inner voice. In the education world, we learn that the brain can really only do two things, receive new ideas and make those ideas stick. But in order for the ideas to stick, the brain needs quiet time to process, to internalize, to make connections with prior knowledge. I've heard you should meditate for 10 minutes a day, and that if you don't have time to meditate for 10 minutes a day, you should probably do it for 20 minutes. But what do we do instead? We fill our time with work and TV, partying, drugs, and alcohol. And of course, maybe the worst one, scrolling social media on our phone. It's hard to sit quietly with ourselves, to have to face all the anxious thoughts and the inner critic within. It takes practice to recognize that those thoughts are not us. We can treat ourselves with grace and kindness. We can soften within. We can observe the thoughts in our mind without judgment and then watch as those thoughts just pass on by. Mozart tells us the music is not in the notes, but in the silence in between. I think the silence is fundamental to practicing courageous honesty. I'll wrap up by saying, what do we do next now that we graduated? I challenge you to have the courage to be honest with yourself. I challenge you to find your passion. I challenge you to take a risk. And then I challenge you to do it again and again and again. I'll end with the rap verse from which I have been drawing meaning over the past couple of years from one of my favorites, Yasin Bey, formerly known as Mos Def. Life is beautiful, even when the world is whack. So much beauty, we forget to be reminded that we can be anywhere and find it. Try it. UAGC, class of 23, congratulations to you all. May you find some beauty in this world. May you create some beauty for this world. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished graduates, I have to say this again. I am thrilled to stand before you as we celebrate an incredible milestone in your lives. Today is all about celebrating you, your dedication, your tenacity, and your achievements. You've journeyed through a path that was uniquely yours, overcoming obstacles and seizing opportunities along the way. And here you are, on the precipice of a new chapter, ready to leave your mark on our world. I would also like to recognize those among you who have earned special honors, our cum laude graduates, magna cum laude graduates, and summa cum laude graduates. Additionally, I want to celebrate those who have been inducted into the university's esteemed honor societies. Alpha Sigma Lambda, Golden Key, Salute, Phi Theta Kappa, Sigma Beta Delta, Delta Alpha Pi, 
Sigma Nu Tau and Tau Epsilon Alpha. Here's to a virtual applause for all of our graduates with honors. Let's also take a moment to virtually applaud the dedicated students of the UAGC Champs Peer Mentoring Program who have selflessly contributed to the success of their peers. Your commitment to community and support is truly commendable, and we are grateful. To the graduates of the Honors Program, your commitment to leadership, innovation, and civic responsibility has not gone unnoticed. Your journey is a testament to your dedication to making a positive impact. And a special salute, a very special salute to our military students. Your dedication to both your education and service to our country is truly inspiring and we thank you for it. Your resilience and commitment embody the spirit of UAGC. At the University of Arizona Global Campus, we're not just an educational institution. We're a community that takes immense pride in each and every one of you. As we gather virtually from all corners of the globe, we celebrate the diversity and the unity that define us. We are proud to be UAGC, a global campus that serves as a beacon of education for busy adults like you, who have tirelessly pursued their dreams despite the challenges that life throws our way. Through over 50 programs and accelerated online classes, we have stood with you, providing the flexibility and quality education you deserve. We are proud to offer a platform that empowers you to achieve your academic goals while juggling the demands of your lives. In this journey, you've been a part of the University of Arizona family, a family that cheers for you, believes in you, and celebrates every milestone alongside you. As you step into the next phase of your life, Remember that the support you found here goes beyond graduation day. You are now a part of the Wildcat Nation. We're spread across the globe, ready to welcome you with open arms. But what truly defines us is not just the degrees we confer, it's the stories we create, the impacts we make, and the lives we touch. You are the embodiment of our proud to be UAGC brand campaign, showing the world what dedication and resilience can achieve. So graduates, let's raise a virtual toast to you, to your accomplishments, your aspirations, and your unwavering spirit. You are the pride of UAGC. And we can't wait to witness the incredible feats you will achieve. As we prepare to celebrate your exceptional achievements and confer your well-earned degrees, I have the privilege of introducing someone who's played an instrumental role in guiding your academic journey. The Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Tony Farrell, is here to help lead us through this momentous occasion. Tony Farrell is not only a respected academic leader, but is also a passionate advocate for student success. His dedication to fostering a supportive and enriching academic environment has been instrumental in shaping the educational experience at UAGC. Thank you, Tony, for being with us today and for your dedication to our graduates. Please proceed with the presentation of our graduates. It is now my distinct pleasure to ask all candidates for doctoral, master, baccalaureate, and associate degrees 
to rise or otherwise acknowledge your presence to your family and friends and in the chat. President Robbins, on behalf of the faculty of UAGC, I'm pleased to recommend that the following candidates be awarded the Doctoral, Master, Baccalaureate, or Associate degrees. It is my great pleasure to present them to you. By the authority vested in me by the Arizona Board of Regents and acting on the recommendation of the University of Arizona Global Campus faculty, I confer upon each of you the appropriate associates, bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree with all the attendant rights and responsibilities. To signify this rite of passage we call commencement, I now invite all associate and baccalaureate candidates to move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations to all of our new graduates. Bear down, you are now Wildcats for life. Today you stand on the cusp of endless possibilities. The diplomas you earned are not just pieces of paper. They're testaments to your dedication, your passion, and your unyielding spirit. They're reminders that you have the power to shape your own destiny. Congratulations, graduates. Embrace the adventure that awaits you. And always remember that you are proud to be UAGC. Thank you, and may your journey be as inspiring as you have been to all of us.